Hi guys, welcome to another episode of The Aspiring Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Hamza Chowdhury, and welcome to today's daily recap, uh, where we basically go over some stocks that we follow on this channel. Uh, it is Tuesday, uh, February 23rd, and wow, the markets were extremely red. And it kind of posed a question for some of us, which is, you know, ask yourself, just take a moment and ask yourself, you know, a day like today where we flushed out a ton of sellers, we always talk about, right, in the market, got to flush out the sellers in order to get new buyers in. Um, would you like something slow and sort of grindy where now you know you're in a stock and you notice it's down a percent then a couple more percent and then five percent and then three and so imagine something that you have and it's just slowly grinding down or would you rather just have a flush right just a flush where you're down like 15 20 percent and it's just flushing and so what was interesting about today is when the market opened we were already significantly down five ten percent on a lot of names and instead of it being sort of a gap and close, it was a gap and go, right? So a lot of people think that when the market opens, okay, it's already down, it's going to close the gap, we're going to go back up. And what happened was those people essentially got flushed out too, right? So if you notice that the market where it opened and it flushed out a lot of people and it went down another 5-10% felt very heavy, but it was only for the first 15 minutes, okay? So we talk about manipulation, we talk about algos, we talk about what the big funds are doing, right? So they're obviously taking out their money out of tech, especially, and they're rotating. It's, a, it's float rotation. They're di doing different things with different uh, stocks, but they're not gonna just take their money and sit on cash, right? They're gonna put it into something else that's undervalued, that they find that has higher potential. And so what you saw was a flush, and then when you had another 5-10%, guess what? Everything came right back, right? Where it opened or even better. And so I just thought that was interesting. So for a lot of you guys out there, you know, this channel is about being self-sufficient. It's about learning from each other. It's about supporting each other. But just always keep in mind that try not to follow other traders. I knew, you know, some traders that we talked about CCIV, one of the killer shorts that I had on yesterday. You know, they're talking about, you know, telling their followers to, you know, sell the thing up at 60 or 80 or sorry, it was like $80. You know, some of these YouTube celebrities, I call them. And... I'm a very open-minded person. So if you post something on this channel, you say something, I'm, I'm very open-minded. I listen to a lot of different people, a lot of different, but at the end of the day, I create my own opinions. I don't recycle people's opinions. I listen to them. And so for CCIV, in, in short, guys, I, I, I mentioned this in a text message I posted on my Instagram on Sunday, which was everyone was on the long side of that trade. Okay, everybody was on the long side. When you know everyone is on one side of the trade, what do you think? the market makers are going to do what do you think is going to happen you think that the news just comes out and now it's time to buy guys the news is old the news has been out and all we're waiting for is that day so if you're a short seller again you're waiting for that day and i clarified yesterday too to say like hey i'm a big fan of lucid motors i have friends that work for them i'm excited i might even be a lucid owner one day so in no shape way or form am i talking about being short on the stock but I'm talking about the price action. I'm talking about the fact that this thing just kept going up and up and up and people were buying it. So we'll go over it when we do cover it. So let's start off with Apple. And so again, for you guys who don't um, follow this channel, if you do, you know, please uh, subscribe and, and like this, this video. It does help uh, support the channel and, and it shows the, channel, the video a lot more to, to a lot more people. And so if you're new and you haven't checked the recap yesterday, one of the things I mentioned before this happened uh, today, this is a 15 minute chart is that we normally see the market feel very heavy in sell-offs. This happens pretty much all the time, at least if not once a week, not, if multiple times a week. But one of the things I mentioned was our key level here of 127.50 for, for uh, Apple. And what I said yesterday was that you notice how when we flushed down to 125, I said that we couldn't hold this key level. And that's what would concern me. So I did sell all my calls that I bought down here but what was interesting was the market just didn't feel like it would come back. So what happened that concerned me? We didn't hold the level and continue. We did what? We we resold. So when you see that you flush, you, you essentially sell off, you, you know, you come to a key level and you can't manage and you sell off again, that to me indicates market weakness. And it was funny because we haven't traded down in the teens and Apple in such a long time that, again, for you guys who've watched this channel for a long time, Way back when we identified this level at 117.80, and I didn't identify a lot of levels in the teens. In fact, this might be one of the few levels I identified, and it, it doesn't apply to Apple. I mean, we're talking about a long time ago, and I looked at it, I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. Look what happened today when this Apple came all the way down, sold, 
it hit a low guys of 118 and 39 cents about you know 50 cents away from our our, our what was considered an extremely strong support at 117.80 and i just thought that was really interesting because i haven't seen that in such a long time that with this market flush guys yes old support you know levels can come back uh, this was a, a very strong support, and so the 118 level bounced off, and now you can see, guess what? We're trading above the fast-moving average. We're clearly indicating we're trying to get back to a resistance, which was a previous heavy support for us at 127.50, which is, again, where we're at here, right? So where did we sell off? We sold off here and we bought, and that's going to now act as resistance, okay? So that's going to be the 126 level. So we're about to close in about seven minutes, and we're trading right below 126, so we're right below this resistance level here. Okay, so again, the people who want to buy down here, this is where they're going to be selling. Okay, and so once we can get to 127.50, we can trade above it. You know, again, I can see it's going back to 130. And that goes back to that question, guys. Would you want something that's sort of slow, steady, and grindy downward? Or would you rather have this major market flush and bam, get everybody out? And now you're sort of rocking and rolling back, right? So we have this massive market flush back to a strong support at 117 or 118. And now we're going to get hopefully back. So let's see, you know, do we continue this weakness? But you can see the volume was a lot higher. The momentum was a lot higher. We were still oversold. We're flattening out uh, when it comes to our, our momentum. And so, you know, let's let's go ahead and see what, what happens for the rest of the week. If the volatility is still there or if, you know, because of this price action, you know, 118 from 127.50 guys. I mean, you just don't see that often. Uh, Tesla is no, no different. You know, again, as this sort of started to tank, you know, people were probably thinking, okay, I'm going to go long. And I remember in the first minute candle, this thing was up $10. Just like that, it flushed all the way down, guys, all the way here to a low of $619. And the reason why this makes so much sense on what this is doing, again, just a quick slam, okay, is first of all, look at the volume, okay? So we have three times the volume on Tesla, which we've been saying has been a slow, steady, boring stock. And instead of it going slowly steady down and i mentioned you know a month ago right right around earnings this thing was going back to 700 dollars. then i mentioned yesterday that i thought i was wrong because it went right back up to 880 and this is what we wanted to see guys we wanted to see that slam imagine you imagine your friend your mom your dad your sister brother how many of you guys would buy tesla at 7 725 650 600 but you wouldn't buy it at 800 or 850 these are the people that came up and just bought up the stock. This is what we wanted. If you're a Tesla long, this is what you wanted. You wanted a flush, a strong flush, an oversold flush, where you could get a bunch of new buyers that were either waiting for the stock to flush or who just simply were like, you know what, I'm not really interested in Tesla at 800 at all-time highs. But yeah, I'll take Tesla at a 30%, 20% discount from its all-time highs. And that's what you saw today. I mean, look at this wick. This wick is extremely long. This is a, a reject, a pushback. And, and, and it's just incredible what we saw today. And we also, you know, again, it wasn't a gap to close at open. It was what a flush. And then we gapped to close. Okay. And we got really close right here. I think we're about $2 from the close, right? So the high is 713.60. And guess what yesterday's low was guys. Yesterday's low was 710.20. Okay. And we closed at 714.50. So we closed the gap. Okay. So that's what that was, but it didn't happen at open. So you were definitely on the wrong side of the trade. But how many people wanted Tesla at 620? I mean, what a steal. I mean, what a great deal, guys. So again, instead of slow and grindy, we just flushed out quick. And now I'm expecting us to get back in the upper trend, at least get back to the 20-day. And so let's see. Let's see what the, the rest of the week looks for us. And so let's see what we can get. Let's see if we can get a solid bounce here at the 695 area, which we identified as our strongest support. We have our go heavy. And so let's see what we can get tomorrow. So let's see, get a bounce of 695 and then get back up here on the 50 day, which is over here at 775. And it's just crazy guys, because Tesla, I mean, look at this average to range, right? It's, a, it's showing 40, but today we traded basically between almost a hundred dollar range. I mean, that, that's exciting. PLTR, uh, just another solid stock, same thing. I mean, 2390, you know, did the same thing the, like the rest of the market. And of course, now we know that what happens, right? Is our previous, uh, support which was our heavy support at 2750 is now clearly a resistance and so we bounced off of that my i think my, my brother was asking me earlier about what he thought pltr and I said you know clearly i think 2750 will be the range and it came up to 2746 
So, you know, again, we'll get through the this level. I think that, you know, we'll bounce off it again tomorrow and then we'll trade above it and then we'll bounce off as once we can hold it as a support and close above it, then then we should be fine. But guys, twenty four dollars. I mean, you're telling me, you know, up here. I mean, again, I don't want to really talk about the squeeze and these long wicks. I'd rather talk about this level here. Thirty nine dollars stock. You know, two weeks ago now I'm getting at twenty three dollars, you know, and this pint tier that just talked about its three M relationship. Uh, just increase more contracts more everything so i mean guys just a complete steal i mean add to your position and you know from from 24 all the way up to 27 three points i mean just so many opportunities if you have a margin account if you have cash guys one of the lessons i learned um, a long time ago and i recommend is please don't use your whole account on at any one time days like this are where we can add days like this are where we can just wait for that opportunity where you're like i don't mind only panettiere at 24 25 26 but if you're exhausted if you have all your money tied up in longs and you don't have that cash flow then the problem with that is when these opportunities come you're just sitting on the sidelines okay so make sure you always have something you know whatever percentage that you need to leave so that you can't pick up opportunities like this because this was just an absolute you know again i call it what the kid in the candy store okay so again the 2750 is our strong support we broke that we failed and now you can see it's clearly acting as resistance so what we need to do is close above that so then we can start you know keeping this and again i keep it as a green line guys because again one bounce doesn't really make it a strong resistance so we're just going to show it as resistance but realistically i think we'll get above there in no time okay this is just overall market weakness mara now i did want to go over the bitcoin stocks i know they've been at play and and you know it's crazy i literally had the stock right back here it was this day here i had it at like 1585 i had a ton of shares and again i'm a day trader so i always tell you guys i'm flat most days but i mean 1585 up to you know to 47 yeah there's definitely some days you wish you were along but, you know, we, we knew where this thing was going. And so, you know, obviously it was on the upper Bollinger Band. You know, we knew that the RSI was overbought. It had a lot of positive momentum. And, you know, it was just kind of waiting for that that crash, right? You, you don't want to be the part of the herd of just people following each other, not realizing and not reading the daily chart. And so we were just expecting, you know, what levels is it going to hold? And so every time it flushed, it came back, it flushed, it came back. So this was a key level here. It was $41, right? So every time we thought that that Bitcoin was going to flush and come back, it just the buyers would step in. Right. And then, we, you know, we, we slightly sold below and then we came back up again. And so it just it it once it basically broke this channel, guys, and then you clearly can see now it was resistance. You know, we knew it was pretty much the, the show was over. OK, so you had this all time high here. You know, we got up to 50 and then essentially we now have 40 as resistance is a strong resistance and so my dab play for mara is going to be 20 about 2479 uh acted as previous resistance back here um earlier in the month and so we bounced off that level a couple times um about 25 bucks but my go heavy support is going to be about 2175 uh, you can see here that we've had a ton of consolidation on that level 2175 and so what i felt like was you know getting the bottom part of this previous support is what i would risk so if I were to do a DAP play at 25, I would be risking an, at least a strong ad at 22. And, you know, it's it's good. it's a you know it's a great play, guys. But, you know, this is just pure hype momentum plays. And so a lot of people can start getting involved here thinking they're getting discounts. They don't realize, guys, that this is this is purely just, you know, a lot of this is just squeeze play. It's just hype. And what goes up can come, come down. Okay. And then with Riot, no different. I've, I've been shorting and longing the stock for a long time and I've been paying very close attention to price action, guys. There's always a buyer coming in, right? So every time you see this thing sell off, it gets bought up, sells off, gets bought up. I remember this day, right? So it, it actually went up all the way up to $85 after hours, okay? And then what happens again? It sells and it gets bought up and sells. Bought. So you constantly have these levels that you want to fail, that you want to fail so you can short or you can sell, whatever. And they con the buyer's constantly there. And so you can see it just kept happening. And so I was a little surprised, to be honest, that you had four days where this level really held strong, okay? And so it was a strong level, but once it broke, you can see now what it acted as resistance and so that happened today with the market flush uh, it's about the 60 dollar level and i know that it's not round but it's about 60 dollars and you know again guys people are like oh how can this happen guys look at tilray tilray went up to 70 dollars and now it's back in like the mid 20s okay so where's the consolidation levels the consolidation levels are right here okay 25 dollars and that's where i would want to get on it just happens that that level is guess what at the 50 day 
right? So 25 gets me the 50 day support. It also gets me, right, a strong support where I had previous consolidation because we do trade under the 20 day. So it wouldn't surprise me if this continues to downtrend and we get some more weakness and we can get into 25, okay? So that would be the level I would be personally in. And yes, there's bag holders up here, guys, 75, 70. They think Bitcoin's going through, you know, to the moon. Guys, things can do that, but when you're on this band, you're on a bullish trend and you're overbought, this thing can come down, right? So we want to buy on flushes, right? We want to buy, you know, when we're down here and, and we have a tight range. And that's one of the things I do want to mention about Tesla. So let me actually talk about that real quick too, kind of mix things up for you guys here. Look at the difference between something that's a squeeze play and a bullish play versus something like Tesla, right? Because some of you guys watching might be like, well, what's going to happen with Tesla? Guys, did you see Tesla is just sort of a pump and dump? right look look at the chart difference look at the daily chart what was the big difference that you see here in this level of 900 down here to 800 you see about like literally four weeks of consolidation in the 800s right so it wasn't a pump and dump right so look at tilray right look at riot look at mara what do you see daily chart that just goes up and flushes down so that's why as a short seller this is the type of plays that you're looking for that are what called the a plus setups you're waiting for that day that it fails which just happened to be today and look at the move you get right from a high of was what, what is this a high of 70 and now you're trading at a low of 45 right so you got 20 point move so this is this is where it clearly can't hold and same thing with pltr you could argue right squeeze play this was a squeeze play up to 45 what levels is it consolidating right here between 32 and 39 dollars tesla between 800 to 900 so it's not like Tesla was a, a squeeze play and then it's just never going to come back. Of course it's going to come back. So I just want to show you guys that difference. Now CCIV, as I mentioned yesterday, guys, mentioned on Sunday, we're going to get everyone trapped on the wrong side of this trade. There's no reason why if everyone knows it's going to happen, they know the news, it's going to be sell the news, ride the hype, and and buy the hype, sell the news. And, and, and clearly if everyone knew the news was going to happen, why would you hold on? knowing that the news became official. And so I was watching it. I was in the middle of a meeting, as I mentioned, and I literally started shorting. And guys, this is something I mentioned yesterday, you know, holding on to that piece. I started shorting pre-market yesterday, realized again, we're holding this key level here at like $57, we're not flushing. And as soon as that news came out, they pushed up and it failed. And then they, they pushed it up again. And when it failed the second time, I was ready for it, but man, Look at that meat on the bone, guys. Look at the meat on the bone. And so what you found is we actually traded below the 20 day and this this stock just went crazy. I mean, it was literally up here at like 65 and it came down here at $30, guys. So imagine losing half of your investment because you were following the sheep, right? So knowing that this was again, sell the news type of play coming in here and guys getting it at $30. I was thinking right here at the consolidation range around 35 would be a steal. You ended up getting down to 30 and then guess what you got up to 44 you got up to nine points and 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 that's just you know i mean an amazing amazing play so again short sell the news knowing that it was coming out tuesday i got involved you know pre-market on monday but it came out ended up coming out post-market monday and then it just had a great flush and of course today it flushed even more it was on the sell side on the imbalance locator and then of course it got bought up and now it's just, you know, sort of trading sideways, but it's holding that key level of 35, which is what I mentioned yesterday, I, I believe too, is that that's where I would want to buy. Okay. So if I were to buy CCIV, I mentioned 35 would be the first level, which is right here and it's holding. So can't, can't complain there. Okay. Uh, with that said, guys, I, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do please hit the like and subscribe button again. It is a hundred percent free content channel. Um, a lot of, you know, a lot of panic sell in probably out there in the market. So just hang tight post any questions or comments you have. And as always, guys, I appreciate you and I wish you the best of luck trading. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.